You're watching Fox Local. New details just coming into the newsroom about a deadly wrong way crash on the I-17 from early this morning. It was in Phoenix on the I-17 near Buckeye Road. This is down near the Durango Curve area. This is according to DPS as well. A woman was driving south in the northbound lanes of the I-17. She crashed into another vehicle and DPS now confirming that wrong way driver and a passenger in the other car both have died. A second victim in that car was hurt and taken to the hospital. The extent of their injuries not yet known and this crash was cleared just right before rush hour this morning. All lanes are back open. We will update you as we receive more information. Well, obviously election day was Tuesday, but there are still many races across the state that are still too close to call. So let's take a quick look here at some of the latest numbers as those ballots continue to be counted this morning. Arizona's Senate race tightening up in the overnight hours. Democrat Ruben Gallego right now holding on to a lead of more than 52,000 votes over Cary Lake. This one is very, very close. And in the congressional races, District 1 remains very close as well, with Republican incumbent David Schweikert widening his lead over Democrat Amish Shaw to just over 9,400 votes. In District 2, Republican Eli Crane now has a lead of more than 20,000 votes over Democrat Jonathan Nez. And House District 4 incumbent Democrat Greg Stanton in the lead by just under 1900 votes over Republican Kelly Cooper. Now let's take you to District 6. This is down in Southern Arizona way. Republican Juan Siscomani hanging on to a very tight lead, just more than 1600 votes. So when folks say, hey, I don't know if I'm going to vote because I'm not sure if my vote matters. Uh, this is the case of yes, it, it does matter. This is ahead of Democrat uh, Kirsten Engel. And on the state level, the balance of power in the Arizona State Legislature remains in question this morning. And this could have a big impact on the upcoming session that begins in January. Dominic Newland live with the details this morning. Guys, good morning. As some of the races in the state house are close, they're only separated by just a few hundred votes. And in both chambers uh, this past session, there could be some major policy shifts. So let's talk a little bit about where the races stand so far. Still a little bit up in the air this morning as a vast majority of the races in the Arizona State House do remain uncalled. Now, history has favored the Republican Party in both chambers. Fox 10 spoke with political analysis Barrett Mar Marson about what the priorities would be under a Democratic legislature or a Republican one. He says the GOP would most likely make the border and gas prices a top priority. The Democrats would try to bring the empowerment scholarship accounts in Arizona schools front and center. Republicans have only not had the majority in the state Senate just twice really in about two generations, three generations even. So we are long used to Republican rule in the legislature. The Democrats haven't controlled the House since the 60s. Now, Marson says the most likely outcome would be a near split legislature, which would make a lot of gridlock, but also a lot of bipartisan conversations in order to have productive sessions. And we're continuing to keep our eye on the election results. They are coming in uh, slowly but surely. So be sure to stick with Fox 10 on air and online. We'll bring you those updates as we get those numbers in, guys. Thank you. Meantime on Capitol Hill here following Donald Trump's win, President Biden pledging a smooth transition of power. Ron is live in the control room this morning as the country prepares for Biden's first remarks since the election. Hey, Ron. Yeah, Ty. So uh, we've been alerted that uh, at about nine o'clock this morning, if it actually runs on time, the president will speak to the nation uh, in a speech from the Rose Garden. Uh, he did phone Donald Trump, we're told, to congratulate him. Uh, he also praised Kamala Harris in a statement saying she entered the campaign under, quote, extraordinary circumstances, which is certainly a unique way to put it since he was basically forced out of the race by certain leaders within the party. So Kamala Harris didn't address supporters on election night, but she did yesterday afternoon conceding the presidential election to Donald Trump. The outcome of this election is not what we wanted, but we must accept the results of this election. I spoke with President-elect Trump and congratulated him on his victory. I also told him that we will help him and his team with their transition. 
and that we will engage in a peaceful transfer of power. Uh, Donald Trump, for the most part, kept kind of a low profile yesterday, staying out of the staying out of the public eye after he did address supporters during the wee hours of Wednesday morning there in Florida. So his first day as president elect uh, spent uh, receiving a number of phone calls from leaders from around the world. And uh, we are told his team is already starting to put together names of people that might be serving in his cabinet. So as we prepare to hear from the president, uh, the Trump campaign says the president-elect has accepted Joe Biden's invite to meet at the White House to discuss a smooth transition. This, you guys, as some are now blaming Biden for hanging on too long, uh, giving Kamala Harris only a few months to mount her presidential campaign. All right, Ron, thank you. Time now, 7.08, and as Ron just mentioned, we are standing by for, uh, for that speech from President Biden, which is again expected right around 9 o'clock our time. But for more information on the election, if you want to take a look at results, both federal, state, and local elections, you can head to our website, fox10phoenix.com slash elections, or you can use that QR code there on your screen. It'll take you right to that website. Let's take a look at some other headlines on this Thursday and in California fast moving wildfire has torn through a community north of Los Angeles, destroying now dozens of homes. Yeah, the fires have forced thousands of people to evacuate in Ventura County. Uh, this is pretty late into the fall months to have situations like this, but there were winds up to 60 miles an hour fueling the flames in Malibu, where some families were forced to evacuate. Several people have been hurt. They've been taken to nearby hospitals. Here's one close up shot of one of these houses uh, burning, just destroyed. The mountain fire has burned more than 10,000 acres northwest of Los Angeles. No words. How do you put it into words when you invest it or everything you have or live somewhere your entire life and then suddenly it's, it's gone? It's really sad. It is absolutely heartbreaking. Tens of thousands have had their power shut off in the state as a precaution. Crews expect conditions to persist until this evening with some of those gusty winds through those mountain ranges. And on the other side of the country, people living along the Gulf Coast, well, they are breathing a sigh of relief this morning. Hurricane Raphael is not expected to make landfall here in the United States. The Category 3 storm with winds of up to 115 miles an hour slammed into Cuba yesterday, knocking out the country's power grid. The storm losing steam as it passed over the island and moved into the Gulf of Mexico as a Category 2 storm. Hurricane Raphael, Raphael rather, is the fifth major hurricane of the year in the Atlantic and the strongest this late in the year since the year 2020. Mm. Developing this morning, the search is on for a suspect involved in a double shooting near 24th Street and McDowell. The officers say two men were shot and had to be hospitalized last night. One has life threatening injuries. It's unclear what led up to the shooting and if the two people knew the gunman. We are still waiting for additional details about the suspect as well. Our Turning to this Fox follow up here for you this morning, thousands of dollars worth of items that were stolen from a Glendale church have now been recovered. We shared this story with you briefly uh, yesterday, and they were found here in a trailer belonging to 44 year old Edward Gower. He's now been arrested for theft. If officers say they use surveillance video and an anonymous tip to find the stolen trailer in Tonopah, west of Phoenix. Now they're asking for the community's help finding a stolen silver Ford F-250. If you have any information on this case, you can call Silent Witness and remain anonymous. That number is 480 Witness. We'll turn into an unusual moment caught on camera. Look at this, a mobile home getting stuck while being transported yesterday. So this is in Tempe on the I-10 right there at the US 60 connector ramp. Apparently the ramp was too narrow and the mobile home was too wide and then boom, just oh, kind of got no. stuck there. So crews worked for hours to kind of free it. I don't know if there was any damage, but look at this. It was so, they were st stuck. He had to go up and over the fence just to even get a better view of what was happening. Your health watch this morning, flu cases on the rise across Arizona. Maybe your kiddos are coming home sniffling or sneezing. Uh, maybe in the workplace, you've heard them as well. Well, all those sniffles you hear may in fact be from something else. So what has you reaching for the tissues? Well, Dr. Dan Kwan joining us this morning live to help you kind of spot the difference. Good, Good morning, morning, Dr. Good morning. Kwan. Good morning.
Uh, let's talk about this because I just got over a little cold myself. Yes, I know. I was I was sitting like this. We're doing this. <laughs> I, I Cloroxed everything. I was trying to do my part to stop the spread. But let's talk about this because I feel like a lot of people right now are kind of dealing with some sort of kind of cold or upper respiratory issue. Yes, there's a there's a lot of these sorts of things going around, whether it's uh, flu, COVID-19, RSV, all these things. Uh, there's even there's even a category of just general viral infection. Oh, so, interesting. Yes. So how do you determine whether or not it's just allergies or maybe you have something a little bit different, maybe a cold or COVID? So allergies, you wouldn't have the body aches and the fever. The, you might have runny nose, but you wouldn't feel as bad as if you had the cold, had a cold flu or COVID-19. Yeah, so it's the body aches really that make the difference. Now, Dr. Kwan, I, I read not too long ago that there's a new test that came out that will test you both for the flu and COVID-19 basically at the same time. Is that correct? In, in the hospital, we actually have one that tests for four things, oh, wow. influenza, uh, RSV, and also COVID-19. So, yes, I, I wouldn't be surprised if there's something in development. And what are you kind of seeing coming through your office? What are, what are kind of the, the general consensus right now? What's going on? Interestingly, I've seen a few influenza A cases that have come out recently. So, yeah. you know, it, it kind of it gets all mixed together with someone has RSV, influenza, yeah. or COVID-19. And I think on this time of year, we're seeing a lot of allergies. You know, we have that change of seasons and things like that. Uh, here in the Valley, because we have a lot of snowbirds who come in for our winter months, is allergy season different for us here in the Valley compared to other parts of the country? It seems that, that it would be. You know, because uh, some some plants are, are blooming in the winter time in some ways. So I think we uh, we tend to have a lot of different uh, pollen generating plants in in the Phoenix area. Yeah, and that local honey might help. Yes. <laughs> yeah, in multiple ways. They have suit that sore throat too. Yes. Uh, let's talk about this. Um, I know that the flu shot is available. So is the COVID nineteen vaccine. Are those still readily available to folks and is it too late in the season or when, what's kind of the timing of when you should start getting those vaccines if you want to? So influenza, the vaccine for influenza takes about two weeks for you to be, develop the immunity that you need. Um, and uh, the COVID-19 shot is still available, yes. Okay, all right, great. Um, do you get the flu shot? I do. And when, what, part, what part of the year do you get your flu shot? Well, I, I just actually got my flu shot recently because I was sick too. So, oh. uh, you know, so I need to go like this. <laughs> I, do I need to back up well. here off this anchor desk? <laughs> 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 Dr. Kwan, I'm going to wash my hands. Uh, <laughs> no. That's important. But, right? How long? Isn't it like a happy birthday song or that twice. you sing? Yeah. Happy birthday twice. Yes. Yeah. yeah, unless you sing really fast. Oh, so. <laughs> I'll slow it down. I'll slow my the, roll. The slow mid-tempo <laughs> version. Dr. Kwan, thank you so much for coming in. We appreciate it.